Merrill from DiffBot here, and welcome to our second KG Basics video. In our last video, we worked through the types of entities you can find in the KG. In this video, we'll dive into how you actually find and explore these entities. As I had mentioned, there are 13 entity types, with four that have the most information. Each entity type has a different set of fields attached to it, so the specifics of how you filter through entities will vary slightly. For example, you can target an article entity around date or language or a topic. Meanwhile, you can target an organization entity by industry or market cap. In this video, we'll work through two quite different entity types just to give you an overview of search. First, organization search, then article search. Let's start with organizations. As you can see, I'm at the search dashboard at app.diffbot.com. The simplest organization search you can do is selecting the organization entity type and clicking search. This will return all entities that match the query. In this case, all orgs. And while this search may seem a little useless because it's so broad, I would recommend getting into the habit of stepping through your query one filter at a time to make sure entities are being returned as you think they should be. So how can we narrow down our search? Notice after you click Organization, the option for a new filter appears. As you can see, a wide range are returned. These allow you to match specific entities or explore entire industries. In this example, let's say we're working on a finance use case. We want to find emerging green energy companies in Egypt. Now we could try and search for this in a search engine, and maybe someone has written a piece of content in a language you speak on the matter, and maybe they haven't. And Maybe it hasn't been updated, or who knows if the information is useful or not. So let's see how we can do this exact same thing with DiffBot's semantic org data. First, let's narrow down the query by country. That's under the filter for location.country.name. And notice how I've selected name contains and entered Egypt. So if you're following along and you click search, this should return about 300,000 entities. So good luck finding a long tail list like that with another type of search online. If you're wondering how this is possible, it's because uh, DiffBot actually crawls all of these organization pages and our AI gathers or infers facts from them. So there's no middleman for data, no interpretation of the data, no data as part of a sales pitch. It's just structured public web data. Next, we can filter by industry. Uh, DiffBot's org entities include NAICS codes, over 200 designations, so you can get pretty granular. Uh, notice if you're following along uh, and you search for energy and utility companies, it looks like we can select renewable energy companies. And these aren't exclusive. Uh, just as in the real world, uh, organizations can work in many industries at once. So if you click search, this should return about 440 entities. Uh, it's getting better, but we wanted to look for emerging companies. So let's specify a founding date sometime within the last five years. So I'll select founding date and after and select a date about five years ago. Looks like 39 entities are returned from this query, which seems likely among Egyptian renewable energy startups. If you scroll above, you can note that this data is exportable in JSON or CSV. You can also view it on a map and see where in Egypt these organizations are based. Alternatively, you can uh, look at this data in a graph format to see how the different entities are connected. Looks like uh, most of these en entities center around Cairo with some important individuals beginning to surface. Uh, you can see a few outliers in other locations. And if you click back to your results, note that uh, each entity itself is also explorable. With uh, Bakia, for example, you can see their industries, where their employees are located, employee skills, funding rounds, uh, size of the corporation, and a uh, feed of recent news and social media mentions. So on to our next query. If you select articles, uh, you can see that there are very different fields when compared to organizations. Let's say in this case we're looking for negative brand mentions for Apple. So in 
this case, we have a few ways to narrow our results. You can match text that's included in an article, uh, or you can match a topical tag that our AI has applied to the article. As Apple Inc. is a well-known entity, it's likely to have a tag of its own. So I'll enter Apple Inc. as a tag and click search. And it looks like over 2 million articles were returned. Let's narrow the search down to recent articles. So if you follow along with the steps I'm taking, this should return about uh, 9,000 articles from around the world. Now let's take our first look at a slightly more advanced feature, uh, Sentiment. Sentiment isn't actually built into the Visual Query Builder we've been using. Uh, it is included, however, for each one of our article entities. If you click uh, CSV in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, note that Sentiment is automatically toggled, and you can see a range of values in uh, column H. Of note is the fact that sentiment ranges from 1, which is very positive, to negative 1, which is very negative. One way to access the score for articles is to export the CSV or JSON. In CSV, you could simply sort by sentiment to find the most positive or negative articles that match. Heading back to the Query Builder, I'll also show you a second way to gain sentiment within the KG interface. If you click on the Query tab, you'll leave the Visual Query Editor. What you're looking at now is DQL, or Diffbot Query Language. While you'll likely want to learn some more about DQL as you spend more time with the Knowledge Graph, you can start by crafting a majority of your query in the Visual Query Editor and adding small snippets. In this case, we can look for the most negative articles just by adding sentiment less than negative 0.5. If you click search, uh, you can note that we've narrowed down our results a great deal more. And from a quick visual scan, they seem to line up with what we're looking for. There's an article about Apple losing a copyright case, an article about Apple threatening to kick Parler out of its app store. These are uh, assumedly quite negative sentiment articles. Now that we've worked through the basics of how DiffBot's knowledge graph search works, be sure to check out some of these techniques for yourself. As you gain more experience or want to go farther with the KG, be sure to check back on this fundamental series to gain additional techniques and KG knowledge. Until next time.